Before we get into today's show, subscribe, turn on those notifications with free agency starting March 13th. A lot of breaking news is about to be going down on this channel, and I don't want you to miss it. Not only do we get the news, we have a hell of a time covering it. So subscribe, turn on those noties. What the heck are you waiting for? Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raider Sport. Mitchell Renz here, and on today's show, an interesting article from NFL insider Ari, Ari Maroff where he breaks down one potential cut for all 32 NFL teams. The player that he thought makes the most sense to move on from for the silver and black is a very common name that I have said as well, and that is Raiders starting center Andre James. The reason why that this makes a lot of sense is because you can save money and he's not part of the regime. So coming up here on today's show is what I'm going to do is show you why I think that it makes sense and then tell you who's going to be the Andre James replacement, and then I'll also show you some extra players to look at in terms of free agency and the draft on the offensive line. So let's get into it. This is why Air Ari had to say on the Raiders cutting James, Andre James has been a solid player for the Raiders, but general manager Dave Ziegler and coach Josh McDaniels used a third-round pick on Dylan Parham last offseason, and he started all 17 games for them in 2022. He's their likely center of the future, possibly leading to James being the odd man out. As it stands right now, this is what the Raiders' offensive line depth chart is, and when you can see the little asterisks on there, that means players are free agents. You have a free agent in Jermaine Illuminor, free agent in Alex Bars. Some of you are like, well, Mitch, if you move on from Andre James, then... How the heck does that make sense for your offensive line, especially when you're probably going to end up bringing in a rookie? Well, I'm glad you asked. We'll get into it here in just a second. But I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's show. So that means top of the show, top comment. I need all y'all to go down right now and answer it. Will the Raiders cut Andre James? Give me a yes. Give me a no. Let me know right now. My answer is I would say that there is a 75% chance that the Raiders decide to move on from Andre. I had the opportunity last season at Barcode Burgers to sit down with Andre, meet him, really cool, humble dude, and I will always wish the best for him. A player who has worked for basically everything he's got in this league, a 2019 UDFA. But unfortunately, my job is to give you my opinion, and my job is to say what I believe is the best thing for the Raiders. Remember, nobody is above the shield, and I have had Andre as a cut candidate for months. Why? When you look at the cap hit, he is scheduled to make $6.98 million. That is the eighth highest on the team. It might be the seventh now that I think about it, but then you look at the pre-June 1st. If you move on from him, you save $5 million, you eat $1.92. If it were to be a post-June 1st cut, the issue is you can only have two of those, and I don't really think that that's the route that the Raiders end up going with James. Yeah, you can save an extra million bucks, but $1 million to a lot of these teams in the NFL, it's not that much money. Did he play 964 snaps at center last season? The answer to that question is yes. Has he gotten better? The answer to that question is also yes. However, though, when you got a new regime, sometimes shit just happens. When you look at his numbers from 2022, according to the PFF, 964 snaps. An overall grade of 62.8, pass blocking 64.5, and then the run blocking of 59.3. He's undersized, which is something that Carmen Brasillo, Raiders offensive line coach, simply does not like, especially when it comes to the center position. Well, then you hop back into your time machine, you look at the Jeremy Fowler report from earlier this offseason that essentially talks about how McDaniels and Ziegler, they're going to continue to aggressively look to tweak their roster and get their guys. And we got to be able to face the facts. Andre James is not one of McDaniels and Ziegler's guys, and we have already seen in just the one year that these guys have been at the helm, if you're not their dude, they have no problem moving on from you. They literally cut Alex Leatherwood, a first-round pick. Why? Wasn't one of their guys. So who's their dude? It's Dylan Parham. They love Dylan Parham, and when the Raiders drafted him, I told y'all, I think that he's going to start at center. I thought that there was a chance it could have happened last season. It's going to happen this season. They took him in the third round. He was working at center during the senior day, and Raiders coaches fell in love with him. You look at what he did all the way back at Memphis. He played all over the offensive line, and he was good. I mean, he was one of the best rookie offensive linemen that there was in the NFL, and people are really going to like him. According to PFF, the grades, over 1,000 snaps, 
61.9 overall grade, the 48.8 pass blocking grade, obviously that can improve, and then the run blocking grade of 66.9. But the reason why they absolutely love him is because of that versatility. 789 snaps at left guard, 137 at center, 110 at right guard. He has experience playing multiple positions on the offensive line, which is very important because if the Raiders do decide to bring in another player, whether that be in free agency or in the draft, having a guy like Parham gives you a lot of flexibility. So with that being said, coming up next here on the show, I got some offensive line free agent targets and also some players that I hope McDaniels and Ziegler at least look at the 2023 NFL Draft. Before I dive into those names, remember you can always interact with me, Twitter, Instagram, at MitchellRent365, and then if you want even more exclusive personal interactions, it's Raidersport.Locals.com. So we're going to head back over here to this Raiders offensive line depth chart and we're going to look at it because I'm telling y'all right now I think they move on from Andre James you kick Dylan Parham in at center and then I'm a big believer that they do everything in their power to bring back Jermaine Illuminor and he could play right tackle but just like Dylan Parham he has a lot of flexibility, so you can put him at right tackle. You can put him at right guard. You can put him at left guard, which gives the Raiders a little bit more opportunity to get creative, which I know Ziegler likes to do in free agency and in the draft. So who could I potentially look at? I made a video probably two months ago about some of my top players that I would look at for the silver and black at the offensive tackle position. I had Mike McGlinchey as the number one prospect. Best value to me was Kelvin Beecham. Then the sleeper was Illuminar. I think you can't really go wrong with all these names here. In terms of offensive guard targets, if let's say you put Parham at center, you keep Jermaine Illuminor at right tackle, now you need a left guard and a right guard. Isaac Silamalu, my top guy, and it's really not all that close to me. I do think also a guy like Andre Dillard, who sure was drafted to be a tackle, but he was able to play pretty solid as an offensive guard this past season for the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, let's just say you don't get certain guys when it comes to free agency. Then you can turn your attention to the draft. My top five offensive tackles, I will admit, Paris Johnson, he's a left tackle, and I'm not going to put him over there at right tackle. Dewan Jones is very intriguing to me. The upside is there. Broderick Jones as well. Very, very high upside. Though I would rather the Raiders invest in the offensive tackle position in free agency with Jermaine Illuminor, and then if you're going to look at a potential guard in the draft, that's the route. My number one guy is Peter Skoronsky. I think he ends up going pretty early, so we'll see exactly if he's even available later on. But the offensive guards in this draft, I do think are a little bit more likely that you're going to get some of these guys more second round, third round. Skaronsky is the only one, in my personal opinion, that goes round one. Though Osiris, Torrance, depending on how he does at the combine, that could really skyrocket. Now my question is this. What's the bigger need? What's the bigger need right now for this Raiders team on the O-line? Is it tackle? Is it offensive guard? Because I do think that the answers change. As this moment, I am filming right now. The bigger team need for the silver and black is offensive tackle. Because you need to be able to figure out your other tackle spot. You need to figure out the right side. But if I sit up here and I say, hey, I believe Jermaine Illuminor ends up coming back. When it comes down to draft time, I think offensive guard will then be a bigger team need than offensive tackle. This show is all around cuts. I mean, that's what it is. It's all around cuts. And if you haven't already seen my Raiders Cut Candidates video, there is one player who, I don't know if you can guess who it is, who was in this show that has already been released by the Silver and Black. I know, you can take your guesses. But then I also have Andre James, and I also have other players in that list. At the end of the day, I hate moving on from players, but... You do need to be able to save money in order to get better. So please go check it out. Another reason to subscribe. That video is also going to be for you guys available in the comments and in the description of today's video.